Hello everyone. Thank you for joining Alpha Biotech's webinar on the topic of implant dentistry, the digital workflows. We hope that you are all uh, safe and healthy. Um, I would like to introduce our speakers, our special speakers today that we can see on the screen, Dr. Alessandro Acocella and Dr. Giampiero Giavatoni from Italy, from the city of Faenza. Um, Dr. Alessandro Cocella is a PhD and specialist in oral surgery, and Dr. Giampiero Giavatoni is a specialist in dentistry and dental prosthetics, and they both uh, are authors of several dentistry articles, and they're very well known in the field of advanced digital implantology. So uh, thank you, doctors, for joining us today. Um, I'd like to request everyone to kindly mute your microphones. Uh, we are going to be recording this session for educational purposes. If you have any questions, you can write them on the chat and we will answer them at the end of the session. So now um, we can start. Doctors, um, you can uh, start your presentation now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniela, for your kind presentation. I'm Alessandra Cocella. And together with Gian Piero, the, I want to tell you that it's a great pleasure for us to have you all, all of you connected in this difficult period of healthy problem about the viruses. And so uh, let's start with our topics that will be our experience in digital dentists, in digital fields. And we will show you in this webinar a lot of uh, concepts and also, as usual, we love to share with you some short videos about our surgery, explain uh, some special, uh, some tips and tricks about uh, applying the prosthesis because uh, our experience is based on the capacity of applying the prosthesis, the pre-made prosthesis at the very end of the surgery. So a few words about our history. As Daniela said before, I'm an oral surgeon and come from the maxillofacial experience with the big flap surgeries and bone grafting and so zygomatic implants and so hip transplants. And more than 15 years ago, I met Gian Piero who introduced me in this uh, new technology and the application of uh, digitalization in uh, the surgery, in the implant surgery. And then we start to work together to uh, sharing our experience and our ideas together to have a protocols um, because we start as a beginner without any protocols. So we share together our experience. We wrote this book you see on the screen that is named on purpose Digital Implantology and we also our project is named Digital, Implanto Digital Implantology. And the best way to show you uh, our project, Digital Implantology, is a pleasure for us to show you this short video. sharing with all the colleagues that want to participate to our courses, waiting for the, the all this kind of their terrible period will end. We, we can schedule a new agenda for our course and we will wait uh, for all of you as a participant of uh, our courses, sharing surgeries, a good time together, eating some Italian foods, and we have to wait for start again with our courses, uh, whatever. To make a comparison between a standard open flap surgery and guided surgery, we love to use this kind of comparison. Open surgery is like driving a little Cessna. Uh, if you see the pilot, I have a direct visualization of the, all the landmarks around him. You have the hills, the, the houses, the land strips, and also the surgeon have the direct visualization of the jawbone of the patient or the anatomy of the patient after opening the flap and can play with the drills, 
is free to choose which kind of position is better. You have to control anytime all the positioning of the implant to have the best landing that we can achieve. But in gut surgeries, the, it's another word. It's like driving a big airplane. You can imagine if you can land with this big airplane in, if in cloudy condition, it's rainy condition, with direct visualization of the land strips. And so man in this kind of situation needs strictly a technology to help him to have a good control of the situation, like we got the surgeries, as you see on your right, we have the guide, we not to choose the change position of the implant, all the positions are planned before, and technology helps the man and the surgeon, and the surgeon have to drive the technology, because there is a human control of all this technology, like in the Airplane, and as you see here, while the airplane is landing, our landing is the delivery of the pre-made processes. The processes are made before the surgery. Laplace surgery, we are blindly, completed, completely blinded. But do we want to achieve any time this result? Okay, dear colleague, gas surgery is only a small part of aesthetic planning. For better understanding this technique, uh, I like to show you this old case we do with uh, Marco de Fradiani, who is uh, one of the greatest prosthodontists from uh, Italy, Pesaro. And uh, we have to treat this patient with all uh, the teeth uh, are hopeless. And we have also to manage high smile line and gummy smile in the same time. Uh, at the time, in 2007, we speak about uh, gut surgery with, uh, uh, with a new uh, technique, but for us it's an old technique because we start more than 15 years ago. And at the moment, it uh, was only possible to manage the CT scan and the keynote. Um, we can use a photo, we can use a photo of the denture of the patient to imagine, imagine the new situation. We don't have any kind of uh, smile design. And we decide to extract all the teeth of the patient, very, very gentle extraction, we cut the roots, very, very gentle manage the tissue, and we decide to use the prosthesis of the patient to increase the spontaneous, spontaneous healing of uh, the, um, the tissue, the bone and the tissue. And we're planning a big number of implants in the upper jaw and also in the lower jaw, 10 and 6. Because I, the best way when you do immediate loading is cemented retained prosthesis it's better to have more implant to have a very, very important uh, splinting of the implant. Anyway, we can guide the implant in the right position in according to the customized abutment. You can see now here we have in that moment the position. Look here. This immediately after the surgery, we can insert the customized abutment of the patient in the patient. And finally, you can see this short video, it's very old video with a very low quality, but you can see it's very important to have stability of the implant in the final position. We manage the abutment, we try the uh, provision of bridge raising, and now we start this model Fradiani start to manage, we want to control the healing of the tissue. You can support the tissue, you can, you can design completely the new 
a measure profile of the new situation of the patient. And now, you see, final position of the provisional bridge, we decide to postpone a soft tissue graft here in the vestibular area because we tilt the implant more vestibular for the, in according to our project, and we decide to postpone after the healing of the implant. This image you can see in this situation and after a few days after the insertion of the provisional bridge. We have new dimension, new light contact, new position of uh, the, uh, the occlusion of the patient. All decide before the surgery. After the healing, you see we have uh, the graft in position. We can manage the final impression. You can see in the right the free framework in the cornea and one only one in the lower jaw. Final position, a lateral view of new aesthetic of the patient. In this image resume all the steps. You can see the position of the implant in relation to the final uh, view of the teeth and the smile of the patient. And also we can see after more than 12 years, the situation is the same in according to the other technique. So anyway, as stressed by Gian Piero, the treatment yesterday, the situation was inverted because the treatment started with the implant placement. The surgeon decide wherever we have the bone available for the implants, despite the positioning of the implant. And then the restor prosthetic restoration was a prosthetic challenge for the technician and the prosthodontist also, because we had to recover all the misalignment of the implants. But from the prosthetic point of view, today, thanks to technology, uh, all the concepts are inverted. So we plan, we plan on the software the best position of the implant, not only according to the available bone, but above all, uh, according with the prosthetic needs for the patient, with the agreement from the aesthetics, the occlusion, and everything can be controlled before the surgery. Then we have only to transfer into the mouth of the patient very accurately the virtual planning. This is the way to work uh, nowadays. And then if we, have, we are able, thanks to the guy, to have a flatbed surgery, we know all of you know the advantages of the for the patient and also for the surgeon for reduction of treatment time extreme reduction of the post-operative discomfort for the patient with reduction of bleeding swelling and pain so this is the at that time was the future but nowadays is the is for us a routine practice at the beginning we have no protocols but uh, I started uh, maybe in 2005. The, the first protocol we had uh, was published by Daniel Bastenberger with the introduction with the Nobel Guy technique and titled our concept by Nobel Biker, who introduced a new upgrade for uh, the protocols. First of all, we had uh, the possibility to have one guide to drive the drill with the drill reductor here. And the, for the very first time, we, we, we had the possibility to um, place the implants through the guide directly. Then we have also the, uh, remember, you will see on our surgery this, uh, sorry. The, this kind, I want to show you this, sorry, this kind of surgical silicone index is a very, very important thing. It's a prerequisite to have a, good stabilization of the guide and good positioning of the guide. It's, it's for us, it's very, very topic point in this surgery. And then also we had um, this kind of abutment that was named guide abutment that allowed us to apply the pre-made cut cam framework uh, of the prosthesis at the very end of the surgery. Also, we had uh, the introduction of the double scanning technique with the good aperture marker inside of the denture and the patient made uh, two, um, two CT scans, one with the patient wearing the denture 
and then one of the dentures alone. And we have to say there are many techniques nowadays, but for us, uh, this technique the is the best one to treat the dental patient with the gold standard till uh, in this moment, actually. So anyway, in the very first time when Daniel Bastenberg published this paper, uh, Jean Piero made the first surgery and we really want to show okay. you the case. Uh, I start uh, in 1997 to use a uh, software planning of the surgery to help my father to, to manage this uh, complex case and um, in 2002 I start to use uh, the guide from uh, materialize with uh, bone support and 2004 with soft tissue support but in 2005, a really big revolution in a revolution in our world. We have to treat this patient. Come to my office, really depressed because they don't have. Uh, some colleagues say to him they are not able to have uh, one fixed rehabilitation. And at the time, with this kind of 2D planning, I was able to insert 80 implant, four and four with the same axe and jump all the defects and the technique uh, was also support the possibility to insert immediately for teeth in one hour the final rehabilitation in, in cut cam like in this case you see the right uh, the final step surgical step and you see here we insert the abutment like alessandro said before uh, guide abutment inside the prosthesis and this was the moment when I tried the prosthesis direct during the surgery in the mouth. After one hour only of surgery. Look, at the moment I manage a little bit pressure because I have to, um, as, and I start to, to, to screw. And it was amazing because all, all the implants screw with the prosthesis. And it was also incredible for us to see after one day after the surgery what is the incredible situation of the tissue of our patient. And we see after 15 years, 14 years, the healing of the tissue. And as a prosthesis, I have some repairing of raised, but is still in place without any problem. And also you can see in the X-ray Panorex, this is a fitting after the surgery, and this is the situation after 14 years. You see the bone is perfect in according to the remodeling of the bone like the other implant that you see all, all the time in your clinic practice. And this is important because at the very beginning we had no long-term results and now we have the long-term result of this surgery. But for, from the, our big experience with the uh, Noble Biker uh, protocols, we jumped to uh, manage the right protocols to apply to all the implants, all kinds of implants, because and we start to uh, work together to find the right protocol and the surgical handling, the best planning, to apply to our patient and sharing with our colleague to have the best fitting of the prosthesis at the very end of the surgery. Why? Because at the very beginning, this was my concern about accuracy and because when I start to, uh, at the time I worked in the university and and there was some problem to, to, to read the papers and this is a one, one of the first maybe randomized clinical trial uh, published from Schneider and co-workers showing the mean, look at the mean of the deviation reported, 1.6 millimeter at the apex, 0 0.5 millimeter in height, and, and this is also only the average. So uh, the conclusion of this first uh, papers was that this, this procedure is not recommended because the risk to exit from the bony envelope is very imminent. But and so the world was divided in, in the, we want to uh, stop to use this, the, the, this guide the surgery and who loves that surgery. Now we work to solve the problem. If there is an accuracy, we, uh, we work with Giampiero to have the, the deep control of all the steps 
And one of the, for example, it's no time to show you all the um, clothes of misfit, but the princess of the misfit is uh, the unstable or un malpositioned surgical guide. If you see on, on this image on your left, you see the superimposition of the planet implants that you see in uh, yellow and the real position of the implants in red. And, and uh, as so often happen, if you see all the implants are displaced backally because there is there was no use of this lingual pin. So you will see a lot of surgery of us with one, at least one or two, better, this is my case, two crossing pin, because we want to show you the white color of the gingiva beneath the guide, showing the ischemia, and showing the, that this guide is very good positioned and stabilized prior to start with drilling protocols. So you have to remember also there is a, a the cumulative loss of accuracy could be a sum of a single errors in the lab steps before, and most of the time we, we have the very, very risk to exit from the bony envelope. If you have no control of the situation, this is a, an open flap after the surgery. You see the good fitting of the prosthesis. That doesn't mean that this is a, a good surgeon, but all the implants are flared, flared and outside of the bone because all the guide move backally during the vibration movement due to the drilling uh, movement of the drills, sorry, uh, during the surgery. So we have to pay attention because it's a very good surgery, but also you have to remember that you have to take care of the inaccuracy because we risk, above all in the mandible, as you see, we have a lot of vessels, you risk the perforation of the uh, uh, cortical place in the lingual, and you can risk the hemorrhage of the flow of the mouth, causing like trading hour obstruction. And believe me, I see three cases in my life when I worked in the hospital of this kind of complication. When, so be careful when, when you play with the guys in club surgery in a soft mandible. My mind, yes, sir. And this is, for example, how we manage traffic. This is not a first case for uh, beginners, believe me, but you see this case and you see here, the anastomosis of the vessels. You have to. The first thing that we did, when we did, we do when we acquire the data of the patient is the diagnosis. So we have to search not only the available bone, but also we have to sign the nerves and all the anatomical limits, like the vessels, to avoid to plan and to cut this vessel. So anyway, this is a good planning. This is a good indication for all of our concept because we have no bone in the back, we have only bone in the anterior, into the foraminal area. You see the planning and you see we have not enough space to place two lingual pin, but we have always a lingual pin to counteract the bending movement during the surgery. Three buckle and at least one pin in the lingual plane. And this is the surgery. I want to show you some uh, standard or four concepts. This is the guide. We leave some tools. And this is the silicone index. This is the first thing that we have to take care of the situation because we have to use the silicone index and stabilize the guide by using buckle and lingual pin. Little cut through the guide. We open the flap a little bit to preserve or keratinized tissue as possible. And usual, as usual, we start with the placement of anterior. And as you see, we can also uh, drive uh, use the drills like a stabilization during the movement. When we drive the drilling in the adjacent sites, we control the movement. All the surgery steps are have to be made very, very carefully. Uh, not to force. We are inserting the first implant, and when we place the first implant, we can drive the drill and increase the diameter of the drills in the addition site. Most of all, we can, in some kids, we have some screwed up to drive the implant in the right position. 
the basal bone here, you have not to force trophic. the atrophic and dense bone, you have not to create necrosis of the bone, so we have to dry the drill very, very fast, allowing the irrigation of the um, bone. In this case, we are, we are obliged to remove the tooth because the posterior inclined 30 degrees implant interfere with the sitting of the guide, but it's very easy to replace the guide thanks to this pin and the previously inserted implant, and then we can drive safely the drills for, for the 30 degrees inclined implant in the back. It's not so easy to manage on a form. We have a lot of interferences, the pin and the cheek of the, and the mouth opening on the patient. But anyway, this is the implant insertion of the left 30 degrees implant. And then when we finish, we can remove the guide and apply the multi-unit straight abutment on anterior implants. And thanks to this resin jig made before on the cast, we can orient the multi-unit 30 degrees abutment for the inclined distal implant. Also, we have to manage some removal of the soft tissue can, that can impair the seating of the prosthesis. And this is the very first moment that we enter with the pronate prosthesis to the mouth of the patient, try to engage some screws. We first try to tighten the, the, these prosthetic screws. And we also, when you have this kind of condition, occlusion at the very end of the surgery, you have to be sure that you have control of all the steps and you did the right work. So we can jump to the X-ray, the pre-op X-ray on your right, and you see the fitting of the pre-made process. This is, the, the, is a made of, uh, you will see you know, those in our video, we love to use a sprinting effect by using a welded bar inside of the prosthesis and with no prosthetic compensation, no, no cement into the, this temporary abutment. We are all rigid framework because we love to stabilize the, the implants during the healing. Okay. Now <clears throat> we start. Now we start to see another uh, case with the severe bone atrophy. Now we speak of the maxilla. It was 2014. The patient was affected uh, to severe at, at osteoporosis and treat with intramuscular bisphosphonate therapy. And uh, also for us uh, was um, difficult to treat the patient because uh, we want to avoid uh, sinus elevation with bone graft or uh, flap surgery, big flap surgery. And um, we decided to use uh, a new technology with open source technique. We, in that period, we used a lot of cases. Uh, work completely digital can increase a lot the um, accuracy of our surgery and we do all ourselves. We produce the guide, we print the guide, we produce the framework all virtually. And from the guide, we can obtain one virtual cast. And we, we want to decide to use a bar to increase a lot the success rate of our surgery because we know if you're splinting immediately, implant, a lot of implant. Some are short, some are with very, very low quality and low stability. We can treat also this very, very difficult patient. And we start the same surgical uh, index, position, lingual pin, like Alessandro said, and we start to manage the drilling, the implant, and also we planning to do two sinus elevation from the crest of the patient without open and flat. You see one osteotome, and now we can fracture one millimeter of, of uh, bone, and we try to remove from the guide to elevate the sinus for insert one implant of four millimeter of, uh, of uh, uh, length. Okay, final position. This is very, very short video. You can see two uh, ten implants in position. And now we divide from 
the bar the teeth on the bar because we want to have direct control of the fitting of our implant. And this is the final position. We decide to remove the posterior point, uh, post, uh, the posterior contact in this case. And this is the final result after one hour of surgery. This is the fitting of the bar. Immediately you can see here, elevation, and we try to have also here in part elevation. Here we expand the bone. So you see the treatment of the gold standard of full arch hard cases, but it's full mouth, uh, um, sorry, full edentulous protocols. That doesn't mean that we manage the patient using double scanning technique. We use a dental with good professional marker inside. We use some silicone index and silicone and uh, radiological index to manage the patient. Then uh, finally, we have an upgrade on technology uh, that we have enough teeth. We have the possibility to match the STL file of the cast of the patient of the intraoral scanning nowadays to uh, re receive the guide directly from the STL file from the model. So, and the time we start to uh, collaboration of Alpha, with Alphabion, this is the uh, GSTAK kit, and we have we had the pleasure to start uh, with this new kit. This is very, very smart, easy to use. It's very very um, easy to to understand. Uh, of the tools inside. You see here, maybe, sorry, there is a very, very easy to recognize the diameter of the drills because they are color marked. Then the other upgrade was that we have no uh, needs of drill reduction. We will use the increase of the length of the drills gradually, starting from the eight millimeter uh, and gradually increase the length. And so it's very easy to find the, we have the white color for the two millimeter drill, the yellow for the 0.4 and so on. And so it's easy to recognize, for example, the 10 millimeter uh, 2.4 drill. It's very, very easy to, to be used. It's also, we have a big um, upgrade to enter into the mouth of the patient without the using of the, the drill, the, the reduction, above all in posterior area. We have two punch here, one narrow and one wide. The anchor pin here, this is very, very good setting also of the kit. We have the drill part, the implant mount, and also the prosthetic tools, the torque wrench and all the devices you need, like a screwdriver for handle the surgery. So the most of post, uh, and so we have the pleasure to drive the surgery for the patient that uh, Giampiero explained before for the maxilla during the live course with Alphabio. You see the matching of the model in little, and we use uh, the. This is the moment when we stabilize the guide. We have no need of any surgical index because we have the teeth. This guide is very stable because it's both teeth and mucosa are supported. But the concept is the same, correctly stabilize the guide during the drilling. But once we have signed the position of the anchor pin, we can open a little bit with the crystal mini flap for the patient. It's not a good discomfort, uh, too much discomfort for this to preserve or, or enlarge the amount of keratinized tissue. And then we start with the protocol. Most of the time, we have a knife in bridge to knife bridge to, to break, and you see the orange color of the 4.1 millimeter that we use as first drill to break the fusion of the two corticals in the uh, knife edge bridge in this patient. If you have a flat condition, you can start with uh, this white two millimeter drill, and as you see here, it's very easy to enter into the mouth of the patient without any reduction of the drill. And we start with the eight millimeter white colored drill from GSDK kit. And this is a good way to show you the, to, how to handle 
the surgery. Then after the eight, mi eight millimeter, we increase the length, not the diameter, to the final length of the um, in implants. Most of all, we can overextend in length the preparation of the first reel. Then we dry the 2.4, the yellow. It's very easy to find the yellow color in the kit. And so we can dry very fast the first two millimeter, two drills, the white one and the red or, or and the yellow. Yeah. Thanks to this kit, we start jump there when we manage the surgery to speak about colors, not that we have diameters of the, the drills. Then we start with the 2.8. We choose for this lady four implants, intraforaminal implant of 30.75 diameter. And we choose the, as you see here, the parallel walls implant, the ATID implant, because we don't want to play with aggressive implant in the mandible because we have hard bone here to manage. So we prefer to have a parallel wall implant. An IATV implant is perfect as diameter and as a shape or micro design of the implant. And as you see here, uh, we play the, we insert the implant one by one, starting from the back, very, very gentle, with not so much uh, insertion torque and we set the motor device not so much. No. And then as you see the, the hand open of the surgeon when we are fully guided. In the, at the beginning, we are not guided. So we drive, as you see here, the implant positioning by uh, under clockwise direction. So, so inverted rotation of the device. And then when we enter into the metallic and we are guided from the system, we can leave the pressure with the hand and let you be driving from the system itself. And as you see, we, we reach the final depth of the implant, the final adaptation altogether for the implants at the very end of the, se the, patient, the, uh, the session. We don't want to exceed 35 newtons of insertion torque. It's a mistake for us if the implant stops to continue to screw by hand as screwdriver with the heart with force because you can break everything and you can may cause a, a, a big deviation of the implant compared to the plane. Because we have to take in mind that it's not guided surgery for us. This is digital implantology. It doesn't mean in our concept we have to the surgery dedicated to apply a pre-made processes. So we have to take care of accuracy of the, our handling. And also you, we have in the kit this very, very smart tool to remove the implant mount, very first time that I see this tool, without applying any movement, rotational movement to the connection of the implant already placed. It's very important to us for us to have this tool. And this is the situation of the implant inserted to the guide. We remove the guide. You see that you have the rare occasion to open the flap to uh, control the accuracy of our placement. All the implants are in the bone. And so we can remove the canine, remove some bony, interferences for sitting, the pre-made processes. This bone will be resolved. And then we can apply the TCT straight abutment. When it's possible, we love to use straight parallel, four parallel implants. And we play with all of four if we are indication for all of four. We have no bone in the back and we are obliged to implant the implant. But for applying the prosthesis, it's better for us to plan the implant parallel to each other. And you see here that we are able to engage the screws, the prosthetic screws, starting with fingers. And then we can go with the, with the motor device or the manual torque wrench to the final tightening forces to this prosthetic tool.
then we can show you the occlusion at the very end of the surgery. Thinking in mind that this mm. patient is very, very compromised from the healthy point of view, and you receive two very, very minimal invasive surgery, solving a bone resorption on the maxilla in one step, and then in a uh, routine procedure for the mandible without any kind of uh, pain and swelling for this patient. And you see the control of the X-ray at the very end of the surgery, and then after the healing of the mandible, uh, mandible treatment, I can show you also the delivery of the deafness processes at the mandible after three years follow-ups, but we have the good occasion to have the five years of control of the upper treatment without any loss of implants. In the past, uh, <clears throat> we treat this kind of patient in the upper jaw, the maxilla, is like a dentist patient, like you see. But in this case, we saw we have a free implant. It's very common to find patients with some implants. This implant has two, 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 two different companies. And uh, we decided to use a new technology, CBD, to match the CT scan with the internal scan or to the lab scan, direct to have um, direct uh, stabilization with a tripod, like in this case, of our guide. And uh, we do, we have a CT scan and we try to match, to match our scan with the implant. It's not so easy, but it's possible to do like a teeth. A little bit, uh, and at the same time, I want to use this free implant to have perfect stabilization of my guide, like you, you, you saw before in the Alessandro, uh, Alessandro show before. Okay, and I can planning uh, other five implants in the anterior area because the patient won one fixed rehabilitation and use the free implant already inserted to have perfect fixation and stabilization of my guide. I can find a way to find the uh, axe to this kind of implant, and I can insert, like in one implant, this position in my guide. And um, we can use the chip work, the prosthesis of the patient, if the prosthesis is okay, is acceptable from a static point of view and the, the clinical point of view, we can use the prosthesis and we can order uh, the uh, guide and we can take a classic impression. We have, in the same time, in the same model, we can have here the free implant and this is the five virtual implant. And now what we do, we can fix one cylinder, free cylinder to the old implant, like here. And we can uh, weld the bar. We love a lot to use for the middle loading, this kind of technique, three diameter of bar. And now in this case, we, we, we can see this abutment it's called alpha lock abutment is born for uh, over dental treatment, but we can use also this uh, abutment now for uh, um, fixed rehabilitation. And this is a final uh, prosthesis, is the prosthesis of the patient with modification. We love to leave space in the first period during the healing because the patient have to clean this part because we don't have we don't want to have problem to infection in this area because remember this patient is a dangerous patient with a danger. Now we can we can see a short video we change the abutment we insert the new abutment we can try before the surgery the new occlusion we can insert the final rehabilitation direct to the free implant already in the mouth. At the same time, we can fix with the screw the, our guide to the implant, and now we have the best situation. 
one guide with perfect screw retained to the implant, we can insert the implant, in this case, nail implant, very, very quiet. Now, this is a SPI implant, sorry. In this, like we saw before, the final adjustment position, we can remove without tension the abutment, and now we are ready to insert the alpha lock abutment uh, selected before in our virtual model intercast with the right eye. And this is creation after the surgery. We can immediately, like over the end and the fixation look without screw, the prosthesis it remain in position. And now I can screw my prosthesis and look at the closure because all is already made before the surgery. And this is the final result in one hour of surgery. Very, very soft, very quiet. All the work we do before the surgery. The surgery is for us is only execution. So there is a very, very good case. Uh, this is uh, to show you the potentiality of the digitalization of the information of the patient before the surgery and how to manage some strange cases like this has always happened. You can see uh, we have to manage an inversion of interactional issues due, due to the uh, resorption of the bone and maybe some skeletic problem of the patient. And when this is the situation of this patient, you see it's very not so easy to manage if uh, full mouth rehabilitation by cutting the gingiva and deciding the, the placement of the implant. So we use our know-how, how to manage. We have the, some remaining teeth on uh, the upper jaw, so we can scan by trios three uh, intraoral scanner by three shape, and so we can match the model. And as you see, the planning, the all implants are parallel to each other according to our philosophy. And and as you see, some attitude of this implant that is very very dedicated to the new occlusion of this patient. And then we can print in our office this guide. And we can also print the cast, you know, the future is this, but we love to use a stone cast, a real stone cast, because we love to weld the bar. It's not possible to weld the bar on the printed cast. In contrast, for the mandible, we have double scanning technique, not, not of the STL file of, uh, on this remaining tooth. We planned four intracranial implants. We received the, the, uh, the cast directly from the guide, putting the stone cast inside of the guide, uh, replacing the uh, implant analog, analog inside and fabricating the, the prosthesis. But we have to change the occlusion of the patient. So we have this kind of simulation with the new occlusion that we can uh, acquire all this information by digitalization and we can insert into the software implant planning this new kind of uh, walks up of, of the patient that will drive the better positioning of the implants. We can so show you some uh, steps of the surgery because this is an old woman, this is a healthy compromised patient. We, we can place the implants also in compromised patient. This patient takes some anticoagulants. We don't interrupt anytime the anticoagulants for the patient. So this is how we manage the placement and the stabilization thanks to the lingual pin of the guide in the mandibular. Little cut of the gingiva because we, the, we have atrophy here, we, we have the lack of keratinized tissue. And then we start with GSTK punch technique some removal of the crystal bone, white color two millimeter drill in all the sides, 2.4 in all the sides, the yellow, 2.8, and then we insert the 30.75 AT ID implant. And as you will see, we show uh, we will choose different kind of implants. 
ATID for the mandible in dense bone and aggressive nail implants. Uh, the implant from a bio, very, very aggressive. You see some bleeding because the patient takes anticoagulant, but the implants, the bleeding stops immediately after the placement of the implant, as you see here. And this is the very hand of the surgery. We apply the TCT abutment on top. And this is the moment when we, we are able to screw the mandibular prosthesis with a new shape. All the position of the implants are planned on the software. It's very easy to transfer into the mouth of the patient. Okay. Uh, Apollo Joe, <clears throat> we have uh, tip support. We tinted the vestibular, uh, back only all, all the implant, like Alessandro saw before. And uh, uh, often, you know, it's very more easy to manage in uh, gas surgery the upper jaw because we have perfect support and normally the quality of the bone is uh, uh, low. And we can use uh, uh, aggressive implants with a high level of stability, like alpha bio implant, we have a lot of implant, SPI, nail implant, can manage without any problem this kind of quality of bone. And most of the time we spend uh, 10, 15 minutes to manage one uh, maxilla, and we spend a lot of time to manage as a mandible, like Alessandro said before. But anyway, this case, uh, the quality is very, very low, but we know before from this scan. And uh, look, the drill go very fast. It's the first drill, two millimeters, it go uh, very, very, very uh, easy in the bone. And we can, under prepare, this is a 2.4, and we can use the implant like osteotome to compress the bone and to increase the stability. Because we know with our implant, we can change the quality of the bone with our step, uh, surgical step. 2.8, fast, this is in live. Look, this is in live, this step, without any cuts. Okay, now we can start to insert the nail implant. Okay, we start all the time reverse and we use the implant like a screw tap. One implant, two implants, three implants. Look, my hand is open hand because I don't want to give any horizontal deviation to my implant. Last, without go in the final position, like we saw before, we want to manage the final position all at the, the same time. We don't want to give too much deviation because you know all the time the implant touch the guide can move our guide. You know, it's it's okay. okay, this is a final condition. Okay. Okay, this is the final position. Now we can remove easily because we will have a lot of tension. And now we can see the implant are really, really positioned in the back of it. After the TCT abutment position, we love TCT because it increases the possibility. At least we try the old prosthesis. Look, and the new teeth, raising, can you raising? We love raising for the uh, first part of the healing because it's easy to add and to remove and, and to manage during the healing. Look, the lip completely without support. And this is a new situation. Okay. You can see only one step, all the implant, all the bar in position. This, after a few months, normally we wait three months, not more, because if the implant is not integrated, it's, you, don't, and you don't have any possibility to have integration. It doesn't matter to leave too much time. Okay, we have uh, the prosthesis, 
we know there are some defects, the patient for us, and we have a period for to manage also this increase of occlusion and vertical dimension. And when the situation is okay, we can remove the old prosthesis, make a modification of the prosthesis, insert in our scanner, and we can obtain in a few days the final bar in titanium. Okay, so you know the framework, and now the new situation in titanium composite, the best material for us for implants. And this is the final result with the two cat -cam bar, and we have removed in a few months to that situation. Okay, and this is the final situation. We love now to use the internal scanning to to see like a photo is a three-dimensional photo and to see in the time how the tissue, the implant can, can, uh, can have the healing. And a little bit also increase of aesthetic, it's all patient, but anyway, most of the time- the She's patient, happy. She's, she's happy. happy. Okay. No, no, we can show uh -huh. the last case, jump. It's a bit, okay. The camera. This case is very important for us, Alessandro. Because anytime we introduce some new technology, this is a, the end of our live course. And most of the time we have a training, we have the pleasure to have a very trained surgeon. And one participant show us this new upgrade to have a face scanning with the app from the mobile phone. Our friend from Paris. Yes, and this is an STL5. So we start to open mind together with Gian Piero and how to manage this file. And so we start playing <laughs> as usual with Gian Piero, uh, increasing our experience to manage this case. The full uh, mouth dentures, this patient wearing a not corrected and denture. We made a new denture in the standard way with the new walks up and all the steps, traditional steps. Uh, choosing the right phonetics and aesthetic uh, agreement from the patient. And then we can try to use this new application because we learned that it's an STL file. You see on your left this uh, not corrected prosthesis, the new situation, but we also use this new uh, walks up with the extra oral stent, as you see here, because because it's, we learned that it's an STL file, and we want to have something to match on the open software, like um, Coyaniastic software, and you can enter the STL file of the face of the patient, and we can orient in the right position according to the prosthetic uh, wearing of, uh, by the patient during the uh, CT scan. So we have all the information matching together. This is the steps of the matching, and so we can, we can, we can, uh, have on our software all the information, the face of the patient, the new walks up that you see in white, and also we, we can remove the face of the patient, showing and we can go on with the planning according to the new walks up. You see the planning here, six straight implants is uh, the gold standard for the maxilla treatment and immediate loading in garage surgery and standard protocols. You see the mandible or the segmentation of the software, in yellow the maxilla, in green the mandible. This is the denture. And thanks to the, the this is the planning, it's live planning of the patient. Okay, and this is this is this is the good image to show you. If you want to, the, to show the face of the patient, the smile, uh, the line of the smile, you see everything. But we can remove the uh, STL file of the face, showing the denture, showing the guide, showing the implant, and showing the dicom set of the anatomy of the maxilla here. Anyway, all the information can plan before the surgery. Then we know how to transfer this uh, position of the implant into the mouth of the patient. Okay. That's okay. Okay, we have now the guide with a new planning. We can project a new bar with Exocat. 
before the surgery. Okay, all the time we use this kind of abutment and we have a cut cam, cut cam uh, prosthesis before the surgery. We do that surgery during Congress in Bologna in last June. More of 500 dentists, so us. Okay, same stabilization to be like uh, we saw in this uh, webinar. Tissue punch, we start to insert the implant. First implant, look my hand without any touch. Drill, implant, and now the last accommodation of the implant. The last adjustment. Okay. You can see the particular, no tissue, no. I can remove uh, now the guide. And now I can insert all the button, uh, already select, already select before in the mode. And this was the moment, was, it was really an emotional moment because we, uh, was one of the first cases, okay, with this kind of uh, smart solution. And look the moment when I try the position, a little bit of pressure, look my hand, a little click. Okay, it's in position. Look, perfect. It's very smart for guy surgery because you can have it very, very fast. Uh, in the position. You can a little bit compress in micro deviation you already all the time in there. And now, we can have in the right the final position. This software gives very, very cheap. You can use your iPhone, iPad. You can see the, uh, also the face in combination to the implant, STL file, mock up, uh, prosthesis, what you want. This is, we think, is real the future. And this is the adaptation of the cut cam bar. But after a few they, we had we we had a, a new course, and we have the right to treat the mandible yeah. to to, to, to months to after. And so we choose alpha bio implants and alpha lock uh, abutment. So we receive the molar cast directly from the guy. And this is the way to how we manage the cargo laser to weld the bar, the titanium bar, lingual to the temporary abutment in our office directly, having the very rigid splinting effect to the medial loading protocol in guided surgery. And can, we can replace and we adapt the denture of the patient. It's very, very cheap work to treat the patient in immediate loading without cutting the patient. And so this is the steps during the alpha bio course, surgical index as usual, fixation, The pin, pre-buckle pin, we remove also the, the prosthesis that they were not yet integrated, but anyway, we have, we have to recover the space for the handling the tools in the lingual because we have to place this lingual pin, very important. Then we start with the drilling protocol, two millimeter drill for alpha bio GSDK kit. Very, very fast surgery. ATAD implant. First implant. Second implant. And now fourth implant. As you see here, you can, there is some space between the hexagonal stops of the implant mount and the metal part of the sleep because we know what to touch at the very beginning with the first implants, the guide, we take, we may cause some displacement of the guide and we'll adapt all together at the very end of the surgery, controlling the fitting of the implants. This is the four implants, look at why the respect of the keratinized tissue here, without cutting the patient, no need of suture. And then we apply the same abutment, look at the situation, this is the virtual situation on the cast we see from the guy, and this is the real situation to the mouth of the patient, the, the, the same situation that we want to look at the very end of the surgery. 
And this is wonderful abutment to compensate some displacement of the inaccuracies, little accuracies, because there is some Teflon inside to compensate the positioning, but it's very uh, an emotional moment when we have the occasion, thanks to this white Teflon part, to have a some sound, some click engagement of the processes before starting to screw. And so we, when we are sure that you are in position, we can screw the prosthesis again in the right position. And also this patient received the full mouth rehabilitation in two steps without any need of sutures in pre-made processes. That's what we want for our patient. Don't cut the patient if you don't need to cut the patient, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, maybe it's, the time is finished. Eh, Jumpy, one hour of lecture. Daniela, Daniela. I, I hope it is all. Uh, or we can show the yeah, case yeah. because we have. Yeah, this, this baby is enough anyway. for the audience. That we want to thank you all of you that remain connected with us, and also remember that we have all this our knowledge in uh, not only in our courses, but also in our book, Digital Implantology, is available in Italian, English version, and now, in this last week, week, in Chinese. In Chinese. <laughs> we wait for the Russian, we hope, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, we can... In Spanish. And you can find on our website, www.digitalimplantology.net, the, the future agenda, we have to schedule the next courses for the next year, thanks to the COVID. And, but anyway, stay tuned to, to to control our new agenda of our courses in Italy, and maybe you can yeah, also give you, some information about uh, other we have, uh, we have also one uh, video channel in Osteocom, um, and we have our channel digitalrehabilitation.com, but anyway, we have a special condition because uh, uh, we are now with this kind of webinar and connection, the quality of our video, most are in 4K and some in um, 